What's up YouTube? So in today's video, I'm gonna be upgrading my current on-screen camera monitor to this brand new one. This is the OCG7. I currently have been using a five inch 4K monitor. Over time, I felt like this is a little bit too small and I wanted to upgrade the size specifically. So I thought seven inches would be very good for everything that I want to achieve with my filming. Let's go ahead and unbox this. I'll run through all of the key specifications. This comes in around $499. This is an all purpose monitor and it doesn't tailor for all of the high end professional filmmakers. This works absolutely great for avid beginners and any enthusiasts that just really want to take their filming to the next level by getting a clearer picture of what you're seeing and shooting with your cameras. So let's go ahead and start off with the unboxing and let's get straight into it. In the box, it comes in this very hard plastic shell carry case. You open up the clips. So let's go through some of the items. You have yourself the user manual. You can read the information about how to get up and running if you'd like. You have yourself the sun hood. If you wanted to protect it from broad daylight, then you have the option. But I think this might not be necessary just because of how bright the screen actually is. And we'll be covering that in this video. You have yourself the DC adapter, which comes with all different plug types. Depending on which country you are, you are pretty much covered. You have a SWIT or an SWIT connection. This is mainly for those that do want to set this up with a professional camera rig. You also have a V-mount plate. So if you didn't want to use an external battery to power this, and if you have a V-mount battery pack that has its own power source, then you can actually put this cover on with the few little screws that come in the packet onto the back of the screen. And the last bit of accessory, you have a cold shoe mount to a tripod ball head magic arm. So you can connect this and as you can see, this is pretty large, it's very heavy duty. This will be perfect for those that have the very large professional camera rigs that are connected to their camera recorders. But if you wanted one that's just a simple cold shoe mount that sits on top of your DSLR or mirrorless camera, you can buy a small one separately on Amazon and that's what I'll be using rather than this one. So just bear that in mind because those tiny ones that you get just to connect it to your camera is not included in the package. And here's the monitor itself. You can see it is a very nice large seven inch monitor. I'll cover the specs in a second, but let's take a look at the design. Take off the screen protector. So let's go through some of the buttons and ports. You have yourself the menu button there that will control the on-screen display options. On the back, you have yourself the battery slot there, which takes Sony NPF batteries. You also have to purchase these separately if you don't have them at home. You have two HDMI ports, an in and out, but this also has two SDI ports, both in and out. One thing to note is that if you do decide to use SDI, which yes, for broadcast professional quality purposes, will give you better transmittency, less latency, and just makes it a little bit more convenient for those that do long live streaming sessions with your professional filming equipment, that will be beneficial to use. Again, you have to buy separate SDI connections yourself to use that. Just note that you can't cross connect the HDMI and the SDI, so you can't do HDMI in with SDI out. You have to either use both SDIs or both HDMIs. You have yourself the power switch there, and this is the DC input just there. And just on the left hand side of the device, you have an SD card slot, which would allow you to update the firmware on this and also connect any LUTs that you wanted to see in live view on the screen itself. On the right hand side, you have a 2.5 millimeter jack remote connection, and then you also have a 3.5 millimeter jack headphone connection port there. On the bottom and top, you have a quarter 20 inch thread to connect this to a tripod or a ball head to mount this in either direction, either top down or bottom up. Now, just for a comparison, this is seven inch. My previous one is five inch, and you can see the big difference in size. This will make it so much easier, especially at maybe longer distances to see what you're actually shooting. And that is actually quite important to me. There's a couple of use cases that I'm going to showcase in this video of shooting with this monitor. So before we go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and set it up. But there's also a few things you would need to get up and running very quickly to set this up on your mirrorless or DSLR camera, just as a basic setup and to use wirelessly without the DC adapter. And to do that, you need to purchase these three additional things. Like I mentioned, if you didn't want to use that very large magic arm that comes in the box, I went ahead and purchased a nice cold shoe to tripod mount, which has a quarter 20 inch thread there. You can just use this to mount the monitor on top of your camera very quickly and easily. You would need a HDMI to micro HDMI cable or whichever cable fits to your camera. This doesn't come in the box as well, but if you prefer to use an SDI input, then again, you'd have to purchase that separately. Then I also have a pack of two Sony MPF batteries. And for each of these, 
I will also leave a link in the description if you wanted to maybe buy some of these separately as well to get you up and running very quickly. Okay, so I've just set it up and as you can see, I've got the HDMI cable in the HDMI in, connected to the micro HDMI port on my Sony a7C, mounted on my little cold shoe tripod mount. And I have the Sony NPF battery just connected there. Now, just before I turn it on and go through some of the on-screen display menu items with this monitor, let's take a look at some of the key specs. Now, this is seven inches, and as you can see, it's a very nice size, so you'll get a very clear picture of everything you've got a live view feed on. This is actually 3000 nits of brightness, which is one of the brightest monitors out there at this size. And I'm gonna be testing this outdoors as well when it is really sunny. At that brightness level, you definitely won't even need to use the sun hood. It's gonna be super clear. Indoors, you can just turn the brightness down, but outdoors, it will give you one of the clearest pictures of the live view when you are in broad daylight. Now it does have a 1920 by 1200 resolution and it has a contrast ratio of 1200 to one with 16.7 million colors in there. So you can be sure you're gonna get the clearest, sharpest, most vibrant colors from this screen. And one of the key things that I also test is the 160 degree viewing angle from all sides. And that's also key as well if you have multiple people that are going to be viewing the monitor and your live feed when you're filming, you can pretty much see everything clearly from pretty much all the angles that you need to. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this on. It's actually very clear and obviously you guys can see a bit of reflection with me in the background. Let's go ahead and talk about the menu items. So you do have this red joystick here. If you hold it down for three seconds to the left, this will bring up the main menu. The first time you turn on the monitor, you may see it maybe stuck on the OC logo. You have to change the input source. By default, it was at SDI and I had to go into this menu to change it to HDMI to be able to see the 4K output. Now my camera is set to 4K and this is a 4K compatible monitor, which is why everything is working very easily and for the first time. When you do go into source, you can switch to SDI and this is where you'll only see just this OC logo here. Now it's very easy, so I'll just hold the menu button to the left, go back into input and change this back to HDMI. Okay, so let's dive a little bit deeper into the other menu items and I won't spend too much time going into them. You do have controls for volume because this has inbuilt speakers so you can have volume out from here as well. Backlight is where you can change the brightness levels. So currently it's set to two. If I go into here, this is three and this will go all the way up to 10, which right now it's quite difficult for you to see through my phone, which is currently recording this screen, but this is absolutely bright. And I wouldn't recommend you going up to this level of brightness indoors. For me, two is absolutely fine indoors, but when we go outside, I'll take it up to the max 10, which will be the 3000 nits and see how that performs in broad sunlight. Then you can also rotate the display if you do mount this in various different positions. Then you also have anamorphic, DSLR scale, status display, calibration LUTs, language, monitor info, and firmware update. You can load LUT files via an SD card from here. Now I've got an SD card here, which I've put seven cube files in there, which are the LUT files that can be loaded onto here. It's very simple. You slot it into the SD card slot there. You go into execute load LUT file, and you should be able to see all of the cube files that are on your micro SD card. So you can go into user, camera or calibration. So I'll go into user. Now I know you can't read that clearly because of the exposure levels on my phone while it's done recording. Let me just take the exposure levels all the way down so you can actually see what it says. So you can see that says SD card. And when I select this, this will bring up my seven cube files, which are various different LUT scenes that I've loaded onto the SD card, which you can then execute and load onto the screen in live view. So I'll just bring the exposure levels back and then you can assign them to a particular user once you've selected that. So it's very quick and easy to load your LUT files and then assign it and see everything in live view. And then you also have the final option, which is factory reset. So if you wanted to take away all of the custom settings and you, all of the files maybe you've loaded to your user profiles, then this is where you can do it from here. Now you're probably wondering where are the settings for the main monitoring features that overlay on top of the actual live view. So if you go back to the live view feed here, all you need to do is press the menu button once and go down into add new tool. And these are all called tools. So these are the ones that you would expect from a monitor like this. So you 
have aspect, save, center, cross hatch, level for all of your framing. Then you have all of the exposed settings that you can also add on top of your live feeds. And I won't go too much into them because you are probably familiar with a lot of these. Then you can also do focus assist and peaking as well. You also have some options for look like an audio meter and you can do an image resize. Now you can add as many tools as you want to something called a scene. So if I back out, you'll see on the bottom left here, it says one. This is essentially scene one and scene is kind of like a page. You can have up to maximum eight pages on this live view monitor. If I just press right on the joystick, this now goes into page two or scene two. If I hit right again, it will go back to one and it does a loop. Now, if you wanted to add more pages, you simply hold the joystick right for three seconds and it comes up with this, add new my set, press select, and this is a new page three. If I go back to page two and then hit the menu button, you'll see I've added a few tools already. So you can go to histogram, zebra, crosshatch, and then aspect is there on every page by default. So if I go to crosshatch, I can enable it by just pressing the menu button. I can also overlay zebra and then histogram as well is just there on the top right. I can turn them off by selecting one of these or selecting all of them. And if I want to add a new one, I just go in here. Let's go ahead with waveform. That will also get added to the list on there. And then I can select it to get the waveform come up on the screen in the live view. So this is a very good way to add custom tools for various different scenes as kind of like pages. So if you want to particularly see a set of tools on a live shoot, for example, then you can set them to a one particular scene. And if very often you'd like to see a different set of tools on a different type of shoot that you might do, then you can set that to another scene page. So that's very convenient as well if you wanted to have multiple different pages that have different tool sets like this. So I'm quite impressed with that. And if you just don't want any tools listed and you just wanna have it as a basic screen setup, then of course you can just go back to your original page one, which I haven't added any tools on the left-hand sidebar. So this next test, I want to see how the input lag is when I'm actually in front of the live view and seeing the difference between when I'm actually doing something in the background and it appearing on the G7 monitor. So let's go ahead and do a test. Now, as you can see, I'm just waving and there's a very tiny lag here and latency, but overall it's actually working very well. And it's as I would expect for a monitor and pretty much any monitor that I've used in the past that is operated by a HDMI. Now just note, if you do use an SDI connection, the latency will be even less. So you will get more accurate depiction of the scene compared to the view on the monitor. But overall, I'm very happy with this and it's almost in real time. Now, one other use case that I have for this monitor is setting it up with my desktop rig here. As you can see, and I've actually linked it to my iPhone 14 Pro Max as a top-down view for when I'm doing unboxing videos, connecting it via HDMI and the lightning to HDMI adapter. So here's how the wires work. So you can see I've got the HDMI cable to the HDMI in at the back. I can use DC power if I just leave it set like this, but I've just left the NPF battery in for now. The cable comes all the way down and it connects all the way up here to my HDMI lightning adapter for my iPhone and that feeds in a live view of everything that I'm shooting with my iPhone, especially useful when I do unboxing videos so I can see everything clearly on this monitor here, and it is a larger size than actually viewing it on an iPhone itself. However, you'll notice that this doesn't fill the entire screen, and of course, that's got a lot to do with the output coming from the iPhone rather than a DSLR or mirrorless camera, but you can make some adjustments. So if you go into the main menu, you can go into DSLR scale, and from here, currently it's set to none. I can change that to Canon 5D, and you can see it almost fills the entire screen, but then it also does the same for Canon 7D, and then you also goes back to none, which shrinks the video down a little bit. So I can set it to this. And now when I go back, it's a much larger view. And there we have a much cleaner view of looking at my footage when I'm recording directly from my iPhone 14 Pro. And this is kind of like, a semi-permanent place to put the monitor just to have as a second monitor to my existing monitor that sits on the shelf back there which will show with the live feed from my mirrorless camera at the same time so I can have two shots running at the same time and I can see myself both on separate monitors so that's one of the convenience things that I like about having a monitor like this and I think seven inches is going to be perfect for this
Okay, so now let's test out the brightness level outdoors. It's quite a nice day today. The sun is out with a little bit of cloud, but you can see the difference here with the screen on my actual Sony camera and on the OC G7. That already from a distance is super bright and I can see everything clearly no matter how far away I step. So this is still on brightness level two. So let's go ahead and turn this up to its max brightness. Go into the menu. Go into backlight. And let's go ahead, change this to max 10. There we go. Look how super bright that is. Everything is clear. I can see all of the details and it just looks like a little mini 4K TV, to be honest, that's how clear it is. I know you guys probably can't see that from how I'm filming this, but in person standing in front of it, it's so much clearer than actually seeing it on this video. And the brightness, I just can't get over how clear this is, especially in broad daylight. But let's take a look at some of the viewing angles, 160 degree viewing angle, so you can see, as I get all the way around to the sides, I can still see everything quite clear. And of course, by seeing this through my camera, you might not be able to see as clear as I'm seeing in person, but just take a look as a brief example. Even if I get lower down, you can't even see anything on my camera screen, but on the monitor, everything is still visible. And that's one thing I really like about it. So no matter where I stand, if I'm at an angle or I'm coordinating a particular shoot, this is always going to be easily visible in my live view. So viewing angles are quite important as well. And to be honest, you don't get that many reflections on the screen, which is very important when you do shoot outdoors, especially when it's sunny and the sun is shining on this. You can still see everything clearly. Of course, it is a reflective screen, but because of how bright this actually is, you don't have to worry about that and any issues about seeing whatever you're filming. Now, if you do film outdoors, one other thing that I really like about this is that you can actually zoom in. So when you hold the joystick up for three seconds, this will do a two times digital zoom and you can go up to four times. And even then it's pretty clear. This is very useful if you don't have a zoom lens, for example, and you just wanna get a closer view of your shot, then you can do that very easily directly from the monitor. So that's quite a nice feature. So overall, this is you know one of my favorite monitors that I've had for my cameras for a very, very long time. It was released quite a while ago, but it's still you know at the top of the range for me personally. And I think this is a very good choice for someone that can afford the price tag. So that's everything I wanted to cover in this review. Hopefully that was useful and it gave you an indicator of how good the OCG7 is. If you have any questions, as always, drop a comment down below. Check out the link in the description to find out all the information about this device and how you can purchase it and all the latest pricing information in case they do have any discounts or offers running. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys at the next one. Take care.